December 20th, 10.15 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number, not four, it's five. Okay. All right, y'all. Y'all ready for this? What? I suppose we should reconvene the trial of Solomon's Todd. Objection! Uh, Your Honor, could you please come out from under your bench? There are no more bombs, I promise. Oh, yes, um, my apologies. I'm still a little jumpy when it comes to trials involving bombs. I mean, first the courtroom exploded. And then Mr. Tone self-destructed. I guess that's one way of describing what happened to Tonate. Anyway, it seems that Mr. Justice was seriously wounded by Mr. Tonate's actions. So you, Mr. Wright, will be taking up the defense. Do you have an understanding of what has happened in the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. The defense is ready. Very well, is the prosecution also ready? Hmm? I take it you'd like me to give the opening statement this time? It's like the judge has become a pretty good mind reader. Well, he's certainly seen more than his fair share of colorful prosecutors. You could say he's something of a veteran of sorts. Let's see. In the previous part of this trial, we learned that the victim, Clay Terran, escaped from Launchpad 1 carrying the defendant, Solomon Starbuck. There were explosions on the second floor of the Space Center and on the rocket itself. The two astronauts used the Launchpad 1 corridor to reach the boarding lounge. And... How could the victim climb down the ladder if he was carrying the defendant? That was a mystery that needed to be solved. But Mr. Justice proved that the victim was killed in... the boarding lounge. Prosecutor Black will you be able to discover any new facts related to this point. Upon further investigation, we discovered an oxygen tank fragment in the lounge. Surprisingly, it would appear that Justice Dono's argument was correct. So that means the testimonies of the first two people on the scenes are a suspect. There were two people who claimed to be the first on the scene, but can we truly trust their statements? Let's see, the two people were Detective Candace Arme and Yuri Cosmos, right? Do you think that one of them might have given a false statement to the police? Yes, it's certainly possible. We might have to do a little more digging. And just as our team was about to cross-examine Detective Arme, the courtroom bombing incident occurred, and the trial was put on hold. That accursed fellow. He killed my witness. He killed Detective Arme. He definitely put the kibosh on anyone asking her about what she saw. Exactly. In other words, the question of who killed the victim in the boarding lounge has once again become the main focus of this trial. It's obvious Prosecutor Blackwell still thinks it was Mr. Stark. Fulbright said that Blackwell is a thing against the astronaut. Nevertheless, the defense argues there was a third person in the lounge and that he killed him. Hmm. To make such reckless claims in a courtroom takes a bold man or a stupid man. There was no third person in the boarding lounge. Or have you gone dotty already? OBJECTION! We'll see who's the tote hard after I trounce you with my years of experience, little boy. In any case, Mr. Starbucks claims he saw someone leaving the lounge. Furthermore, a Space Center employee also saw a suspicious figure at the scene. They saw a third person? <laughs> I see my sister has been running her mouth. That's right, I almost forgot that Aura is Prosecutor Blackwell's sister. No matter, she didn't see this mystery person's face clearly. Therefore, there is no evidence to indicate that the person was not the defendant. Hmm, I guess the possibility that the figure wasn't Starbuck is still there. In brief, we need to determine if a third person was there or not. To this end, we should hear the testimony of one of the first people on the scene. Director Cosmos, huh? Very well, Bailiff, please bring the witness to the stand. Why, well, I believe I've seen you before in the newspapers. Of course you have, of course you have. For I am Yuri Cosmos, director of the Cosmos Space Center, which is of course named after me, Yuri Cosmos. Don't you have anything you wish to ask me? Looks like he's all geared up to do some bragging. Seven years ago, I successfully launched the hot one, and...
Everyone already knows how brilliant you are. Even I am trying to hold back my tears at seeing such a great man standing before me. So could you please proceed directly to your important testimony? Ha ha ha! I see this fine young lad has a proper appreciation of greatness. Then allow me to begin my epical testimony that will record it in the annals of history. That speech of Prosecutor Blackwood just now? It sounded more to me like he was poking fun at Director Cosmos. It's probably for the best that it sailed right over the director's head. Now then, Director Cosmos, the condensed version of your illustrious testimony, please. What I saw at the scene. Detective Armour and I rushed towards the boarding lounge together. We went via the control room and peeked in from there to see what was going on in the shop. We saw a figure standing in the middle of the lounge in terror and lying on the floor. I hate to say it, but I can only imagine the standing figure must have been Starbuck. Hmm, I see. So in your testimony, you claim you arrived on the scene after the two had escaped from the launch pad to the lounge, and just after the victim had been killed. Oh, the horror of the humanity, but what I said is what I saw, and what I saw is what I said. Courageous action to take in the face of such terrifying explosions, wouldn't you say? To save my men, I went personally into the epicenter of danger. Risking my own life for theirs, ha 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 ha! Well, what do you know? It sounds like the director really cares about his men. Yeah, although it sounds more like he was scared and just had a peek from far away. Is the defense ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Director Cosmo's testimony is pretty vague. I'm going to have to press him and draw out more information before I do anything else. Cross-examination! Hold it! Where were you coming from? The sixth floor. We were making sure any stragglers made their way to the fourth floor. It was then we heard about Starbuck and Terry, and hurried to the third floor lounge. Oh my, Galactic Scooter here, of course. Why do you keep calling it Galactic? Does it have something to do with space? Of course, it's specifically designed to be used on Galactic battleships. I, I see, then I take it works in Zero G2? Sadly no, with the current state of technology as it is. I'm afraid it would just float about and be galactically useless. Well, that's a galactic bummer. Uh, the space age polar thing. And when you got to the seat, what... What did you say? Hold it! Hold it! Let's see, according to this diagram... You didn't have to go through the control room to get to the boarding lounge one. Looks like you could have gone through from the southern corridor as well. Yes, but in her haste, Detective Army rushed ahead of me towards the control room. All I could do was merely follow behind her. I see. So we peeked into the boarding lounge from the control room door, and... We saw a figure standing in the middle of the lounge in terror and line. Hold it! So you couldn't see who that figure was clearly or what they were doing. Strive the general character tell was that it was a person standing by The defendant no doubt staring aghast at his deed. What other explanation is there? Arg, I'm so close. But without evidence, I can't prove that person's a third party. I don't relish in this hand. Magistrate Virgin must have been struck. Hold it! Aura Blackwell also saw a suspicious figure in the lounge, but she gave the statement that it was too dark to see the person's face clearly. Did you see this figure's face clearly? No, not clearly. The light that they were holding illuminated the area around their feet at the time. But other than that, I could see little else. That's why I could see Terran, but I couldn't see what the, who the other person was. So, for all you know, it might not have been Miss Starbuck, isn't that correct? I would like to believe that Starbuck isn't the type of man who's- OBJECTION! When the witness entered the, the boarding lounge, there was no third person. Isn't that correct, Grey Space Center Director? 
Yes, that's right. Only Starbuck and Tad were there by that time. After we peeked in, the lounge suddenly went dark and the figure vanished. You mean they disappeared? That's Objection! The reason the figure appeared to vanish is because it was the defendant. When the witness weren't looking, he fell to the floor Hold and it. consciousness. Hold on, Director Cosmos. Did you ever take your eyes off the scene? Just for a brief instant, about as long as it takes for a shooting star to go by. If you took your eyes off the scene, then this third person could have escaped during that time. But what escape route could this person have used? The direction opposite the control room, the southern door to the elevators. There's no security lock on that door, so it would have been possible to escape them. All things are possible, right, Donald? The real question is, do you have any proof? Oh, uh, well... If we were just talking possibilities, we could each profess whatever we'd like. And an innate inmate who used to be a university professor and lunar researcher used to say that there is a kingdom of little green men who live under the surface of the moon. As long as they don't punish us in the name of the said moon, what we've done to it. But I say, where your, where's your proof that this coin kingdom exists? He's calling your theory a work of fiction, boss. And he's right, I don't have any proof yet. Still. The southern door was a possible escape route. I better make a mental note of that. Director Cosmos, may I ask you a question? Yes? Why did you look away from the boarding lounge? Ha ha ha! There's actually another tale of bravery behind the action of the plot. It was when Detective Army saw the figure and raised her gun. Being a great humanitarian and protector of mankind, I tried to stop her. What? You're saying Detective Army raised her gun as soon as she saw the figure? I imagine her instincts as a detective told her they were going to kill her. Hmm, I don't know about that. And were you able to prevent Detective Army from firing her gun? I'm afraid I was too late. I was unable to stop her. She identified herself clearly and then... She fired two warning shots at the shadow of the figure. Hmm, this information about Detective Army's action sounds critically important. Please add it to your testimony. Hold it! And neither of the two shots hit the culprit. That is correct. The detective appears to have missed on purpose. Hmm, but did she really? There's something about this that bothers me. So Detective Army fired two warning shots, did she? That's the first time that info has come out. Wonder if I can find any inconsistencies. Let me see what information I got. There we go. I present the objection. This piece of evidence clearly explodes. Okay. Okay. Objection! There we go. Are you sure you're really paying attention to what the tick of our is? You doubt my words, words that will someday, <laughs> words that will someday be written in history books. Somehow, I don't think that those exact words will ever be written down in any history books. Mr. Wright, could you please explain yourself so that we can all understand? You say that the Detective Bar may fire two warning shots, and yet only one bullet hole was ever found at the scene. What? Only one bullet hole means the gun was only fired once. And yet Director Cosmos is saying Detective Army fired two shots. No editor would allow such a glaring contradiction into a history book. Unfortunately for you, 
The witness words are true. We confirmed that two shots were fired from the detective. OBJECTION! But there was only one bullet hole at the scene. Where did the other bullet hole vanish to? Ah! You should know the answer to that already. I should! During the previous trial, a certain oxygen tank was presented as evidence. We've already discussed that it was ruptured in the lounge, have we not? Well, it appears that the thing that ruptured it was a bullet. A bullet that was found near the tank, to be precise. This bullet was fired from a 38 caliber gun. The same caliber as a detective's gun. What?! <laughs> Phoenix Wright, I love this dude, man! Big fan, big fan. The rifling marks also match up. There's no question the bullet was fired from Detective Army's gun. So that's the gun from... Okay. Detective Army. Rifling marks! They're like a gun's fingerprints on a bullet, correct? And examining the rifling marks on a bullet can tell us the gun it was fired from. One of the bullets the detective fired found its way into a holographic image display. The other bullet came to a stop near the victim's oxygen tank. The evidence confirms the director's statement that the detective fired two shots. My beautiful contradiction! Gone! All gone! So that bullet hole was from a 38 caliber, huh? I better update the record. Very good! Now we know the fate of both of the shots Detective Army fire. Mr. Wright, does that clear up all of your questions? Hmm... Detective Army fired two warning shots. One hit the holograph display and the other hit the oxygen tank. Does that really clear up everything about what happened at the scene? No, Your Honor, it doesn't! Detective Army fired two warning shots from a 38 caliber gun. But that doesn't explain the existence of a certain piece of evidence found at the scene. A piece that points to the existence of a third person.